My name is Angie Rekintz. I work at Iowa State University as an extension program specialist, and I am the project coordinator, facilitator, whatever you want to call it, for this particular group. So really what I want to do is give you a little bit of history about this group and how this partnership formed and why it formed in Iowa um, and how it has formed the basis for um, a lot of our extension programming or at least to support our extension programming and manure management issues in Iowa. And I really should probably just say it's called image for a reason. The whole goal when we this was started um, in the early days was to promote a positive image of manure management. So a lot of people call it IMAG or IMIG or whatever, but really it was supposed to be a play on words. And so we had a positive image um, in the use of manure in Iowa. That was not my brainchild, by the way. So really, um, image began in, back in 1997. Um, it really was under the leadership of that time and the brainchild of Lyle LaSalle, who was working at NRCS in Iowa at that time. Um, I know for a lot of you in this room, it's going to be hard to think back to 1997, but we really were just on the verge of web pages at that time. Okay, there were web pages, but not a lot of web pages. There were web pages for extension programming, but not a whole lot. So really, this was supposed to be cutting edge at that particular time. Um, so. When you think of all the things that have happened since then, it's really hard to put your perspective back in that time and say, wow, that seemed like a good idea because we've evolved so much. Um, so IMAGE began as a state level technical committee and I'll show you the partners in IMAGE in the next slide. Um, because at that point in time, um, the expansion of confinement agricultural systems in Iowa was, was really exploding quite rapidly. Um, there were a lot of people out there, there was a lot of information, um, and it just wasn't in one place. Our producers were struggling to find information, our service providers and our agency staffs were struggling to find pertinent technical information um, that could be used in our systems in Iowa. Um, and really we just needed to figure out what of those pieces of material that already existed um, were relevant um, for our producers in Iowa or what needed to be developed. So originally when this effort started, this was a short-term three-year project. That's all it was supposed to be, it was a project. So 15 years later, it's now grown into an extension program. These are the partners in IMAGE. Um, so you can see, um, even though this really was started by NRCS and they facilitated the original meetings, um, these are the people that we've brought to the table over the course of the years. And I, haven't even, I don't even have them all listed um, but you can see the University, Iowa State University um, Extension and the College of Ag are heavily involved. The Farm Bureau, all the livestock commodity groups are represented. Um, our Agribusiness Association of Iowa, our Conservation Districts of Iowa, our regulatory scheme, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, Iowa NRCS, and our Department of Ag. Some groups that aren't listed in, in this particular slide. Um, in the very beginning, we had um, uh, farm credit financial services involved because we really felt as people were expanding their livestock operations farm credit was the main loaning institution at that time in Iowa for farmers um, and they really had a vested interest in making sure producers had good timely information for expanding those livestock farms and they were really a good supporter in the very beginning days um, they're not currently at the table but uh, another group that is not currently um, at the table in this time, but was very heavily involved in the uh, original um, beginning of this was the Iowa Environmental Council. And the regulatory groups um, and the university thought it was really important to have some outside influence um, from our environmental uh, groups in Iowa so that they could be engaged in this because we were just really kind of begin beginning, beginning to see that us against them kind of thing. Um, the social aspects of all the manure issues in Iowa were really starting to take off um, at that particular point in time. And the Iowa Environmental Council provided some balance to the kinds of information we were presenting um, in those early days. I'd like to say that was the case today in this day and age. Um, so the objectives were to provide easy access for information on manure research and application. So originally, that's what all it was supposed to be about, was research and manure application. That's it. Nothing else. 
okay? Um, identify existing materials, relevant publications and educational programs that existed within the state of Iowa, that existed in surrounding states. Convert all that material, if necessary, to an electronic format. So everything was supposed to end up on a web page. Um, solicit needs from qualified resources. So if we, need, we needed to go get something that was being used in Minnesota, we could partner with them or help, you know, get them to, uh, you know, get their permission to use materials or find people that could help us develop materials. Um, really use the website, which is what the primary output of all this is, um, as a clearinghouse. Um, and even in that day and age, um, we, we knew then that not everybody had web access. And so the commodity groups said, we want to make sure that our clientele, our producers, if they don't have web access that whatever is developed, we can still get them hard copies. And in the beginning day, the biggest part of the budget for this program was actually the postage to mail the materials out because not everybody had web access. So anything that was developed went out to people free of charge. If they wanted it, all they needed to do was contact their commodity group or extension or whomever, and those materials were provided. So the funding about this, and I think maybe the thing to look about this is from the early days on, Iowa NRCS through EQIP funds, um, later on through CIG funds, through some of their state dollars, was a heavy financial supporter in this effort. They really wanted this whole group to, be make, to make sure that everybody was on the same page. They were willing to financially support that effort. Um, the Iowa DNR um, was also a big partner in that, um, it sort, sort of through our middle phase of this time period. And then in the last couple of years, the last two years in particular, three years, um, we don't have any money from DNR anymore, and we don't have any money from NRCS. So all those funds have gone to, to support other things. So they want their funds to support local watershed efforts, not statewide programming. And I can understand what their goal is. Um, so Iowa State was the recipient <coughs> of funds through the Smithfield Agreement with the Iowa Attorney General's Office where um, Smithfield provided, provides, there are two separate pots of funds, but $100,000 a year comes to Iowa State for a 10-year period um, for a lawsuit that was settled. Um, and those dollars are filtered through Iowa State, and some of those dollars now support image because the idea was it was supposed to support pork producers um, from an educational standpoint. Occasional funding from livestock groups, um, we, get, we get small amounts of money, you know, a five to $10,000 check occasionally from the um, uh, Pork Producers Association and, and some of the other entities, the Iowa Turkey Federation, to develop manure management materials for species specific issues. So um, the Iowa Pork Producers Association has been extremely supportive in all of this. Um, and, and they'll come to us every once in a while and say, we really think our producers need this information. Can you develop this for us? We don't have the technical resources or the background to do it. We don't have the printing capacity. We don't have the distribution capacity. Um, and that, that is a really good partnership. Um, I think maybe the biggest thing, and we'll talk maybe some about that in, oops, in some of the um, outputs here. So really, there was a lot of stuff about manure. None of the commodity groups back in um, the beginning of all this in the late 90s and early to mid 2000s had anything on their existing web pages about manure management, okay? There was nothing on the Iowa Department of Natural Resources page about manure management until the, reg the regulations really started to evolve. In fact, they didn't have a web page for the longest time. So the livestock commodity groups took time to survey their members. What do you need for information? What, how can we help you? How can we help you to manage manure um, as a crop nutrient resource? That was the primary goal. So they did that. We inventoried all the existing resources and determined where the gaps were. Um, and then probably maybe the biggest success out of all this in that day and age in the late 90s was to get all the agencies and the commodity groups, all those people you saw listed, the groups you saw listed, to come to the same terms on using common inputs and planning practices. That was a huge deal. 
that was a lot of time, a lot of meetings, a lot of negotiation. Um, they were very positive meetings. And, and really, in terms of what happens in Iowa, so NRCS, DNR, the university are all on the same page when it comes to our nutrient management planning process. We use the same nutrient availabilities. We were using the same nutrient outputs, the same manure production numbers. Um, this was huge. Um, I, had, I had prior to this spent time in two other states doing some similar things where NRCS had these planning numbers, the state regulatory agency had these planning numbers, the university had these planning numbers, and producers just didn't really know where they needed to be. So this was a huge um, a huge success in my opinion. It took a lot of time. Um, I'm excited to say it worked back in the late 90s and early 2000s. I'm not so excited to say that in 2013 we're kind of diverging from that goal again. And I think there are some reasons for that. Okay, so I'm really partial to the color green. Um, so this was the very first web page. This is what it looked like. It was green. It was not the Iowa State um, Cardinal red and gold, simply from the fact is this was not supposed to be an Iowa State University project. This was supposed to be a team effort. So we tried to pick something neutral. I think of manure as being sustainable, and I think green was a good color. So it may not show up as green in the back of the room, but this was really our first web page. This is, when you look at this now, you're like, oh my god, that's hideous, right? Well, that's what I think. It was very text heavy, um, but the one thing you can see is we decided early on what all these um, groups, the this, this subjects were going to be, and these have pretty much carried through to this day and age. And I'll show you, so here's what our web page looks like today. We primarily do everything now through a web page. Um, so this is the current shot, the stuff changes. You can see I've been tweeting about the conference. It shows up on our Twitter feed. Um, but these are the same, pretty much the same subject areas um, that were on the original site. A few things have been added over the years. We now have a video page. Um, we have a page for you to go subscribe for our monthly newsletter. Our air quality page is under, going under a huge renovation right now for our air quality work in Iowa. Um, and you can see that. And one of the things we do is the monthly newsletter uses these same subject lines. Um, so, so what you see in the newsletter kind of follows that same, the same topic or subject line. Um, so I just wanted to give you, now, why is it red today? Well, it's red today because we have no external funding. And it is an Iowa State University Extension project now. And it probably will continue to be that way. Not to say we don't have the support and partnership um, of all those partners, um, but it was kind of this political game, I'm sorry to say, and saying, oh, you guys don't give us funding? We might be a little bolder about the things we say about manure management in Iowa instead of trying to keep the peace in the family, so to speak. Um, once again, maybe not necessarily my decision, but I, I can't say I disagree with all that. Okay, so what are the products that have come out of this whole 15-year pr project? Um, and remember, this is all about education and outreach for our livestock producers in Iowa, um, for our um, service providers. We call them service providers. They might be TSPs, they might not be TSPs. Um, agency staff, okay? This is where primarily where the agency staff, NRCS and DNR, are getting their manure management information as long, and as well as the watershed coordinators through the Department of Ag. We put out a monthly newsletter, sometimes twice a month, depending on what's going on. It's all um, via um, like eye contact, so it's all electronic. We've developed over 40 fact sheets in the last 15 years, which doesn't seem like a whole lot. Um, we've updated a lot more fact sheets. We've hosted over 50 field days in the beginning, and we still do this. Um, in the beginning, we were having field days constantly, manure management field days, tours, all kinds of things. They were very popular. They still are. It's, we learned last week at our um, Ag and Natural Resources Professional Development Day in Iowa that um, producers really do still like their field days, and we will probably continue that. Um, we held three multi-day manure clinics. When we started that effort um, in 2000, so that was in 2005, 6, and 7, I think, um, really we had no idea who would show up at a three-day manure clinic. You would have been surprised who would come out of the work. This was a hands-on three-day 
in the field, in the classroom, all the way from calibrating manure application equipment to looking at runoff to looking at all kinds of things. Um, I, would, I would not have guessed we would have had that many people showed up. Um, we've developed over 200 popular press articles. I primarily do that. Um, I really feel blessed in the fact that the popular press in Iowa will give us whatever space we want at whatever time we want um, to put out manure management information. Uh, we've supported and developed educational materials for over 600 extension meetings. And that, that isn't even beyond our manure applicator certification program. That's beyond that. Um, we have nine manure management videos. I know videos are a hot thing, but man, that's not my favorite thing to develop. They take a lot of time and a lot of setup. And, but you know what? That's what my boss says he wants. And then I have you know, a list of products, a Twitter feed. I'm not really sure what I feel about that Twitter feed yet. I'm not very good at tweeting. I just retweet stuff Jill sends out, and I find that easy to do, okay? Um, I do tweet, but I, I think maybe the biggest success in that is we have something like 220 Twitter followers, and I'm always amazed at that. Um, but all the press in Iowa follow our Twitter feed, and those tweets go everywhere very quickly. I would have never guessed that I could send out 140 characters of less of do not apply manure, it's going to rain, and the ground's still frozen, goes everywhere instantaneously, okay? Now, I don't know who's reading those tweets. Um, I just know they're getting sent out. Um, so it's pretty, that's the power, I guess, of social media and a little bit overwhelming and scary. So I don't really know if I call that a product. That's why the question marks are there. These are the lessons learned in the last 15 years. Um, like I said, probably the biggest success, in my opinion, looking back on this, was the integration of the state agencies, the land grant university, and the commodity group message to the livestock producers. Everybody was on the same page. I think everybody is pretty much on the same page now. Um, it's just gotten, as you all know in your states, it has gotten way more complicated than it used to be. Um, longevity of programs are crucial to producer awareness and success. We had seen this repeatedly in Iowa. Like I said, this was only supposed to be a three-year effort. I was hired back to Iowa to get this effort off the ground. I was supposed to make a web page, and that was it. In six months, I was no longer supposed to have a job. I'm still here 15 years later, <laughs> still doing the same things I was doing um, 15 years ago, right? Um, so we, we have seen programs come and go in Iowa. We, we had this huge program in Iowa where when, when manure management plans were first required in Iowa, our field specialists set up workshops to help producers develop manure management plans before the regulatory requirements hit. That was all great. That was a really good precursor to all of that, um, but that went away. And then people kind of slipped off the table, so to speak, right? It just, once that program went away, things just didn't happen. So um, I think it's important when we think about how to communicate and what these programs or projects are going to be is we need to put some longevity on them. Levering financial support levels the field of, um, for client access, right? The pork producers have been really big in our support. NRCS and DNR have been really support. The Turkey Federation has no money to give us. Um, but they will do anything we ask them to do. And their producers are great at helping us out. But they can't bring any money to the table. They just don't have it. And so without those whole, that whole set of group coming together, I think some of the species would have been left out of, of this issue. Um, a surprise output of all of this. Um, crucial development of a service industry. So when we started this whole effort, and you know, you can say that this was the result of all the regulations we have in Iowa, and I'd like to say that that's partially true, but really what this came down to is we started doing educational programming. Um, we found out that we had an entire series of clients out there that wanted to take on the responsibility of developing manure management plans and becoming service providers or consultants to that livestock industry, beyond the vets, beyond the feed suppliers. Um, we now have an entire industry of people in Iowa that do nothing but take soil samples and write manure management plans and help them do their record keeping. I mean, we have people that exclusively do that. We have two very large companies in Iowa that employ five to 10 people um, to do nothing but that. 
Um, and those people are our biggest supporters because they are relying on Iowa State University in this particular project, program, whatever you want to call image, um, to get their training. That's where they're coming from. That didn't exist back in 1997. It didn't really exist until about 2005 or so. I mean, it's really kind of exploded. Okay, the next steps, and then I'm done. Continue to evaluate the needs and develop new materials. So we're kind of in the middle of some of that. The, the next talk, which has my name on it, but my colleague is going to do, um, you'll see that that particular project is also supporting image and image is supporting that project. We have a whole bunch of existing fact sheets, especially on financial terms with, when it comes to manure management that need to be updated. We have a whole bunch of regulatory fact sheets that need to be updated. I'm going to spend way more time than I want to in the next year securing funding as we go future, forward in the future. Um, and then because the regulations in Iowa in the last 10 to 15 years have been extremely dynamic, okay? Like we have 180 pages of rules in Iowa and I can't keep up with them and I get paid to do that. So when you're in South Dakota and you call me, <laughs> And I'm like, and people yell at me, what do you know me? They don't need to know the manure rules in South Dakota. I can't keep up with them in Iowa. And that seriously is what I'm paid to do. We're going to regroup. And while we're going to continue to help producers understand the regulations, um, we're really going to return to our research efforts. I'm not going to do the research, but my job is to get that research out to people. We're going to return to promoting best management practices, and we're going to ramp up our education as we go forward in time. We kind of slipped away from all that when we focused on regulatory stuff, and it's now kind of time to return. You said you didn't like videos. I guess I'm curious if you've looked at using YouTube videos that are five, ten minutes. Developing them or using them? Using them and putting them out there similar to the way you've done your Twitter stuff. Um, we have linked to some YouTube videos that we, we haven't had as resources, and we link to those on our video page. Um, I, I find YouTube to be completely overwhelming when you go to look for manure resources there. There's a lot of stuff out there, and um, I think short five and ten minute videos are a really great way to communicate things. Um, I just feel like i got to spend a lot more time kind of sorting through what's out there to make sure that what we see is relevant to what our producers in Iowa need. So anybody can sit at home and Google, you know, manure on YouTube or search for manure. On, you, you're going to come up with thousands of videos. The question is, is what is going to be the most relevant to that, you know, that, that need.